Okay, today we're going to go through the rehab of a subscapularis tear. Now that's your rotator cuff, but you're probably thinking normally when you think of rotator cuff as supraspinatus or infraspinatus, the subscap, which is usually the one that's pretty often forgotten, but also not really injured that much. And it's also one that sort of goes misdiagnosed. Even thinks it's like, oh, it must be a supraspinatus. Because the symptoms are pretty similar, but you can actually isolate it and work it out. We've got a patient at the moment who's got a current tear in their subscapularis. They have had an MRI to confirm what we know, and it's definitely a tear. Um, but the testing of it is pretty simple. He's got pain on medial rotation way more than lateral rotation. You'll probably find that with a subscap tear, you'll get a bit of pain on external rotation or lateral rotation when they're doing this because you're using rotator cuff, okay? It's sort of stretching it out. It's being used. But when you isolate medial rotation, so in an abducted position like that, say on the bed, and we load them up, there's the pain, okay? Now on his scan, now this is this is not everybody's like this, but on his scan, this is your subscapularis, right? If you look at if you look at the back of my shoulder, that's the back of my shoulder. Okay, there's your infra, there's your teres minor, there's your supraspinatus coming through the top there, and on the inside, it's your subscap. Pretty big muscle, right? So that's right on the inside of my shoulder blade, and that's going to do that movement. Okay, will help with that movement. His tear, have a look at this. So his tear is right on the insertion point here. So if you imagine this is not all red, just imagine like a white tendon part here, so when the muscle blends into a tendon. So he's got a tear right from what they call the foot plate. So where it hooks on, see that sort of area there? Where it hooks onto the foot plate, he's, he's got a tear right from that point coming through. And his tear is sort of decent. It's 1.2 centimeters long, I've sort of drawn it there, 1.2 centimeters long, but only three mil wide, and it's not all the way through. So it's not what they call full thickness, it's partial thickness, okay? So it's inside the tendon, not all the way through. You can't see a hole all the way through. So he has got some sort of substance there we can rehab. It's not a surgical candidate, this one. This is a rehab one. So if you're one of those people who's got subscapularis tears that are not surgical, as in they're not ripped off the bone, that sort of thing, then they need to be surgically operated on, then the rehab is your best bet to start with. Now, I'm going to go through the rehab from beginner right through to advanced stuff. So let's start with the beginner stuff. There's sort of three exercises I get people doing, beginners doing. The first one is using a band at elbow height. Okay, so you start off at elbow height. That's where you want to go for. Obviously, as we get advanced, we're going to go higher, but you want to go elbow height to start with. And light band don't overcook it with the band because you really want these exercises to be mostly pain free if you're generating pain with rehab of a subscapularis rotator cuff tear it's probably not going to get better that free fast so when you do internal rotation to start with, with a band the first thing i want you to do is not do it from out there to there because that is the outer range okay it's very weak out there if you've got a tear in your subscapularis being out there is very weak. That's going to be too much low for it. So what you do, simple trick, face the band. Okay, so if it's in my right hand, I want to be absolutely parallel with the band with my forearm. Okay, so I'm working from the mid-range of meter rotation to the inner range. Right, very easy stuff. Now you're going to find this absolutely easy, but that's the idea. We need to build up some strength. So this tension needs to be enough. It can't be loosey-goose. This one is a medium power band, so a red power band, medium ferro-tubing, so same as a the band, but tubing, that's medium. Um, probably a good one to start with. If you're struggling, go to a yellow. That's one level down. I wouldn't start with a green. Green's too heavy. So you start with a red. You just got to work out how much tension you've got. And then, have your, see my elbow here? It's not by my side, all right? It's just a little bit forward, because when I want to come in, I want to come into then perpendicular, to that band, okay? So I don't want my arm out there because then I'm not getting the full range. So I want my arm, arm a little bit forward and then I'll get to there. Don't have your arm tucked in by your side, have it away, have it forward and then pull in. Bit of a squeeze there, touch your abdomen and slowly back out to there again. Okay, so you're working on the inner range of that medial rotation or internal rotation in a range work which is going to nail your subscap and hopefully it won't work too much pick just make sure you're not trying to do that move you're not trying to come in and do a, like a horizontal flexion move because it's going to generate your pick 
not your subscap. So it's got to be make sure that that peg doesn't do too much when you come in. So when you get to there, there'll be a little time there, but not too much, all right? That's your first one. Everyone asks reps and sets, right? So with this one, you've got to try and get three sets. You've got to try and get 10 reps. If you can't do that, this band is too heavy. Now that's pretty simple, three sets of 10. But keep it simple, keep it basic, keep it consistent so you know where your rehab is going, all right? There's no point trying to go up to 15 or down eight, just keep it simple, keep it 10. When you get more advanced and you go up the thing, you may find that you can go heavier, less reps, or you can do more endurance stuff, so it's lighter, longer reps. But let's just keep it three sets of 10 for now. So that's your first one, all right? Second thing you do is then go. Once you've progressed on that, and it may take you sort of a week, a week and a half, then you can go into this movement here, okay? So then it's just a simple standard internal rotation. Couple of tips with this one though. You may find you need to go up a band to the green, but I'd wait until you go advanced probably for that. You could probably go from red to green and then you're gonna go higher, but stick with the red from here to there, right? You, because what's happening is the advancement is from this mid-range to the arter. That's the advancement. You haven't even trained that part yet. So you need to work on, okay, I need to go all the way out, just stop before pain, and then come all the way back and then all the way over to here. Can you see I'm not going full internal now though? Because I'm not doing that, okay? So you're gonna go sort of not fully internal, but you're gonna do way more outer range out here, all right? And you just gotta try and work on how well can I let it go out. As it goes out, don't make the mistake of letting that drift away, okay? So keep it there, don't lock it by your side. We wanna keep it away because you've gotta control your ball and socket, I want stability with your strengthening, meaning you have to use the whole rotator cuff together to try and keep that ball centering in the socket beautifully. If you go in here and do that, you're not learning too much about your rotator cuff, you're only doing your subscap. Remember, the subscap works as a unit, so you've got to try and make sure it works with the other three, all right? That's easy, keep your reps and sets the same. So you can advance that with a green. Now, what I like doing with all your band work and your, you know, your isolating subscap, right, is I want you to work on some stability work as well. Best thing to do, because this is all sort of standing stuff, keep it standing, keep it easy, grab a Pilates ball like that, okay? Now this could be a very light little beach ball, Pilates ball, we use Pilates balls. See they're a bit squishy, and that gives you a little bit of bounce. Use that against the wall, all right? You're gonna do a scapula press. Now this is working on serratus, but what you're trying to do is make that rotator cuff, if that's the ball in my, so in my shoulder, you want the full rotator cuff coming in like a grappling hook and holding and trying to stimulate that sort of compression in there, all right, and stability. So this is a good one to do in between all your sort of band work you're doing. I like it. So this one goes on the wall, all right? And again, try and keep that sort of round about shoulder height. I'd probably go a little bit, just a little bit lower than shoulder height. From there, you want to lean on that ball, okay? Obviously, people with wrist issues, you might have a few issues with this, but you've got to try and keep that ball centered there so you're not going to slip away. And then what you do is you go through your scapular press movement. So you're going to go from full protraction, full retraction. Don't let the elbow bend. A little bit of bend is okay, but I'd rather you try and not let that elbow bend, which means you have to use your tricep. And you work on retracting all the way back, keeping your shoulder level, so don't let it hitch up, and push all the way out without rounding your back. So keep your back normal, core on, shoulder blade back, push away, all right? So while I'm doing a bit of serratus work in here, I shouldn't be doing any pec movement, right? Because I'm not doing horizontal flexion with the arm. I'm doing movement here, but what I am doing is I'm cutting that out, I'm putting this on, okay? And that's a nice one to start working on. Reps and sets keeping the same. Okay, so that's your sort of entry-level stuff. You should be doing that sort of stuff. You've been diagnosed with a tear, it's weak. You're trying to get stronger. Those are your sort of three go-tos to start with. Once you've started improving, that may take you maybe two, three, four weeks, depending on how well you improve, how quickly you improve. You wanna go then up higher. You also wanna go through with dumbbells. Now, I'll show you the dumbbell one first. With dumbbells, you're doing internal rotation. Now, that's a two kilo, that's a one kilo. You may think that's pathetic. These are hard. If you've got a supraspinatus, a su supraspinatus, subscapularis tear, these are actually quite heavy. You've got to be careful that you don't start causing pain by having or thinking that you can do the same weight you use in the gym as you use for this. So 
Two kilos might be too much. Try the one, okay? Now, if you haven't got any weights at home, just use a wine bottle or something, something that's easy or a battery drill, something that's got a bit of weight into it. Now, what you do, I'll show you sort of this weight. This is the easiest weight. If I show you the two kilo, you're gonna do into rotation up at 90 degrees. So if I'm in that position there, I want to do this movement, okay? But I wanna have my elbow off the ground, okay? So again, if I have my elbow on the ground, I'm resting, my rotator cuff doesn't have to do too much apart from into rotation. I want this the whole thing to work together. So I'm gonna bring that off the ground. I've gotta keep that elbow in one spot. All right, so when I rotate back, I'm going to look at that and go, okay, I'm going to try and keep that one spot. Go back to there if I can. Don't rest it on the ground. Go to there and then pull it back. Now, you may find there's pain through that movement. If there's pain, see if it's a load issue. So you go, okay, go back to here. If I go from there and go back and there's way less pain or no pain, you know that that weight is more appropriate. All right, because there's no point you trying to do this through pain. It's not going to work you only need to go to 90 degrees there, okay? You don't need to go keep going through there because of the gravity issue, right? So just go from there and, and then go all the way back as far as you go. If you find that's fine, but then there's pain from there, there, then just work onto that, okay? Stop at the pain. You may find as the week goes on, you get a little bit stronger, a bit more coordinated, a bit more neuromuscular activated through there. You can, oh, I can go further with that, all right? But just make sure that that is not painful. So there's your internal rotation with a dumbbell. It's a really nice one. It's old school, but it's great, okay? And just make sure that elbow is not flying around. So when you're doing those ones, you should, because you're up at 90 degrees, because you've advanced, you should be able to do the band ones. Now, so think of that one as more of a control thing. It does different movement patterns, if you like, as far as what's happening with the weight and gravity compared to what we're doing next, but we're doing it in the same position at 90 degrees. And this is one of my favorites. You would have seen this in other videos. This one here is your interrotation with bands up at shoulder height. So get, go one level up, get it up to sort of around about shoulder height, okay, or head height. And I like using two bands, but two long bands. Don't use one and double it up because it's just too short. There's too much load. There's not enough expansion there. So I would use two bands. Now you can use the two of the same color, all right? You can choose a heavy one, a light one, you work out which bands you need. So with this, what I tend to do is get to the point where, okay, I'm up at my shoulder height here again with my elbow, all right? So my elbow's at shoulder. I'm trying to get my elbow straight out from the shoulder. If some people feel they're a bit tight, if you've got a bit of tight, a little tightness in there, you may find you have to bring your elbow just a little bit forward, but I would try and keep it out to there. That's almost your starting point, okay? So you need to, from there, can you stay there with a bit of tension on and feel the load here without pain? Then you need to creep forward a little bit to see how much load you can bear at that point because that's your end point, right? You need to know where your end point is. Then you pull it forward and rotate forward. And that's almost like your rest period between a set, if you like, because at that point in there, there is tension there, but there's not much straight into that subscap. As I go back, the tension increases. Yes, the band's lessening, but because of the angle, the load is increasing there and it's getting harder and harder for me. And guess what else is happening? I'm going to more and more and more out of range where that tear is vulnerable. Now, ultimately, you want to get good range in your shoulder. You want to be past zero degrees. So you want to sort of get that plus five, plus 10 up there. Some of you might be so tight from old injuries, you, you can't even get there. And this might be a really good one for you to work on to try and, oh, can I get some more range there like my other shoulder, all right? And then you pull forward, there's rest period. Just watch my shoulder, oh, my shoulder, my elbow, you don't want to be going, when I go back, you don't want to be dipping down. Okay, so keep up that elbow. Look at that elbow, watch it. Keep it at level, which is meaning you're going to use your brain to your rotator cuff to control the movement in the socket. Remember, when I do that movement, it's the ball rotating in the socket. Okay, the arm, the hand, the elbow is irrelevant. It's the ball rotating in the socket when I do that. Everything else is stationary. Okay, so you're doing rotation through your shoulder when you do this. You are challenging your rotator cuff, but you're loading your subscapularis, all right? So again, too heavy will be too much pec. Make sure you can probably do this here and do this and there's no pec going on, which is great. Um, if I try and come in and do that, pec turns on. So just don't move your, that's why I'm saying don't move your elbow. If you move your elbow forward, you fire your pec. If you don't move your elbow forward, 
See that? Doesn't work, all right? So that's awesome one to work on, okay? Is it like a sort of segue into doing sports stuff? Because if you imagine like I'm a tennis player and I'm gonna do that movement or if I'm throwing, you need that movement, all right? And people who are in throwing sports, you know, are very vulnerable to subscap tests because they're doing so much forward movement. Now, next level up, your last one you need to work on is up in here. Now, I find, especially with the guy I've got at the moment, he can do two bands here, but he can't do two bands with this one because it's just a harder exercise. So we drop him down to one, and he'll progress back through the colors, back to two, okay? Now this one is a high load. Now this is sort of very sports specific. Um, and I can get him doing this because he's down the track a little bit. This one is think of like, I need to mimic a throwing action, a racket sport action, like a tennis smash, that sort of thing, a swimming action. I need to mimic that to help that movement pad and help that strengthening for sports specific work. So have that way up high. Your start position, you have to sort of move away a little bit. Your start position is up at 90 degrees here again, but your elbow's out. It's not sitting at right angles anymore. It's out over here. Once it's out over there, sort of by about 20 degrees, I want that position to stay the same. So as I come from here, I'm now going forward to there. We call this high to low. So I'm doing internal rotation, but I'm going from high to low. I'm trying to keep all the rotation happening in the shoulder joint, not doing any elbow stuff. All right, so you go back as far as you can. You let the whole shoulder girdle go back now. So the shoulder blade's involved a little bit more now. Back he goes, because we've done our stability work for our shoulder blade, now we're going dynamic, okay? We need to let that shoulder blade move. We need to go from protraction to retraction, elevation, external rotation. You go internal rotation, horizontal flexion, protraction, like that, all right? And you're trying to work, yes, you'll use your pec, but that's the idea, that's what you use in sport. Um, but this is trying to get some movement patterns back through the shoulder strengthening that subscape at the same time. Once you get good at that, you'll find that you can really progress up the bands quite well. You go from one band, maybe a yellow and a red, then a red and a green, and two greens, and you really get stuck into it. And that's going to sort of cement that last little bit of strength thing to get people back. If you just stick at this band stuff down here for the whole time, you're not going to get it good enough to go back to doing throwing or racket sports. So that's my long-winded internal rotation subscapularis workout. See how that goes. See you next time.